Okay, so this was a relatively straightforward one, to be honest. Um, assess the extent to which um, a fall in unemployment um, is always desirable. I mean, is it always desirable? Well, nothing is always desirable, but um, but but for this problem, by and large, um, um, a reduction in unemployment yeah, is is likely to be beneficial. And really, the simplest way of approaching this is to yeah, is firstly explain well why it is yeah, that we would think that yeah, we would think that unemployment is a bad thing, and and therefore why getting rid of it, getting rid of unemployment, um, is is going to be is going to be beneficial. You can then go on to qualify that and say, well, it's not necessarily true, but yeah. Really, it's just saying, well, you know, kind of, what are the advantages of getting rid of unemployment? The answer are, well, you know, it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's good for households. It's good for individuals because we know that you know, unemployment creates major costs for households, obviously, simply in income terms. Yeah, but we also know, yeah, in terms of health, yeah, you know, both mental and physical health. Yeah, these are all affected by very high levels, you know, by by high levels of unemployment, particularly by long term unemployment. Yeah, so by reducing unemployment, yeah, it helps us to decrease inequalities, it helps us to raise living standards of ordinary people, um, and so on and so forth. Secondly, we can argue that um, unemployment is inefficient. Yeah, so getting rid of it yeah, um, is probably good. We know that yeah, unemployment, assuming it's some sort of cyclical unemployment, yeah, means that if we've got goods and services, means that the economy is operating inside its production possibility frontier. Yeah, um, it is Pareto inefficient. Um, and therefore, again, if you can get rid of that unemployment by stimulating aggregate demand, yeah, then you're going to make better use of society's resources. Thirdly, we know that unemployment um, has fiscal implications. Yeah, so in terms of in terms of government finances, unemployment is bad news. So getting rid of it, yeah, it'll mean that firstly there's a decrease in yeah you know, government spending um, on benefits, on the one hand, and secondly. Yeah, there'll be an increase in tax revenue. Um, yeah, from income tax as more people work, from VAT as more people spend. Yeah, probably corporation tax as well um, as companies start to make more profit. I mean, there are other reasons that unemployment's a bad thing. Yeah, you could talk about yeah, you could talk about the idea that reducing unemployment will probably um, increase company profits and so on. But yeah, there's yeah, there's plenty to be said there. I think yeah. So other points, other points are of course relevant. Yeah, but that that feels like plenty. So. Why might we say that? Yeah. You know, why might we say that reducing unemployment um, isn't always isn't always a great plan? Um, I think there are two or three, you know, kind of obvious qualifications. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so yeah. So one obvious qualification is yeah you know, the inflation risk, um, and that's particularly true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah if yeah unemployment falls below the nary. So in other words, yeah, if we reduce unemployment, yeah, if we reduce kind of cyclical unemployment that's um, yeah occurring in recession by stimulating demand, fine. If we reduce unemployment below the narrow, yeah, then at that stage we're creating skill shortages, going to create inflationary pressure, um, and that may not be great. And you could illustrate that using um, ADAS or Phillips curve if you preferred short run or long run Phillips curve, um, or all of those things. Uh, so that. Yeah, it depends. So, and what we're starting to say is it depends on the type of unemployment, so, and it depends on how you're reducing it. So if all you're doing is banging up aggregate demand, that's fine as long as you have demand-side unemployment. If you bang up aggregate demand when actually really you've got skill shortages, regional issues, and so on, yeah, then it's less likely to be desirable. Um, secondly, we could argue that actually, yeah, unemployment, some unemployment, yeah, some unemployment is simply is healthy. Um, you can argue that it's the you know, it's some of it's frictional unemployment, for example, and frictional unemployment generally is a sign of yeah you know, the idea that workers are leaving one area of the economy to move into another. Yeah, some some people would say that it's yeah it's a sign of kind of something like creative destruction at work at work. Yeah, that some businesses are dying, other ones are succeeding, um, and that's simply. Um, a, a standard factor, yeah, um, yeah, involving the a healthy, dynamic, growing economy where resources get reallocated towards where yeah consumers more need them or to where yeah the economy the economy is more efficient, um, and it also means that it, for yeah you know, for yeah you know, for new startups yeah there's a pool of skilled labour. Um, you, you might also argue that yeah, it depends on why unemployment is falling. Yeah, so if people, for example, yeah, if people are simply leaving the workforce, for example, yeah, because they become discouraged, then 
really unemployment isn't actually falling, not in any meaningful sense. You know, you know, you've just got discouraged workers, you've got sort of hidden unemployment and something along those lines. So really, you, know, you kind of structure is, is relatively simple. Um, and then you just kind of come to some sort of a judgment about the extent to which you think yeah, um, unemployment is or is not, um, sorry, a reduction in unemployment is or not undesirable. Um, and the simple thing I think is to say, well, look, yeah, if we can, if we can decrease unemployment and decrease the NERU, then that's probably going to be beneficial. We'll avoid inflationary pressure, yeah, um, and it just means that we're getting closer to full employment, yeah, without, yeah, without any particular problems. If we just decrease unemployment, yeah, but not the NERU, yeah, um, then that's yeah, you know, that that's more problematic, yeah, and, and depending on where we where we where we start out. If you want to illustrate that in simple terms, yeah, um, kind of that one is this idea that we increase aggregate demand and kind of increase potential as well. Yeah, so we get kind of non-inflationary growth or something. Whereas that one is this idea that initially if you increase aggregate demand, we can grow, we can create growth without inflation. But as you keep going, yeah, there is a greater and greater risk of inflation. So as unemployed as we get closer and closer to full employment, the inflation risk increases. But something like that seems like a perfectly sensible way um, of approaching that as a question.